Praise God and welcome to this important episode where we are going to be addressing very important questions that centers on Christian marriage and family life. As we go sharing the word of God, we have received correspondence and some of these correspondence are questions that are bordering on real life situation. And there is a need for us to provide scriptural answer so that in answering these questions, we felt we should make it public because there are many Christian homes going through similar situation so that by the grace of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to produce biblical answer to address this all important subject matter. We have compiled most of these questions. I will read them and provide answers by the grace of God, hoping that this will bless your life and you may need more clarification from us. Then you can contact us and trust God to help you with counseling and covering. The first question we have uh, that borders on Christian marriage and family life goes thus, and I want you to listen very attentively. I am married with three kids for my husband for eight years. I have saved money on my own to buy a real estate. After discussing with my husband, he warned me strictly not to buy or if I buy, I should pack there. That means leave the home and leave his home. Pastor, I'm confused. What should I do? This is a very important question and we will trust God to give us a balanced answer to this. The union between the husband and wife is ordained by God. And in the ordination of God, he programs it that the husband will be the head of the wife. It is expected that an ideal Christian husband is the priest, is the pastor, and the overseer over the family. He is to superintend over all affairs in the home, child training, financial issues, material issues, feeding the family, taking care of the, in fact, the husband is supposed to be the cover for the home, to cover the home from disaster. And so the wife is expected according to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23. He said, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. While husband will love their wives as Christ loved the church. So you will see that the arithmetic of love and submission is very crucial in Christian marriage. The submission of the wife is expected to be total as unto the Lord. That means the wife sees her husband as a Lord. And so when decisions are being taken in the family, the husband is not expected to lord it, to bully, to be an oppressor to the wife. Not in that sense. But we are talking about mutual, Christ-centered submission and love. Let me quickly say that we are these two are reigning. Issues like this will not even arise. In the first place, for the wife to have a secret saving, to the intent and purpose of going into buying a personal real estate or building a house somewhere without the knowledge of the husband, it has already negated scriptures. 
Because in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, the Bible said when God made the husband and the wife, he put them in the garden. He said, and they were naked. They were not ashamed. Nakedness means that they were open to each other. There was no secret agenda on the part of the husband and on the part of the wife. So we are advising very strongly that in situations like that, it is a very good thing that the wife is so prudent and virtuous and very meticulous to have saved money. Maybe she has a higher purchasing power than the husband. Now, wife, woman, that money that you have saved, before you go ahead with such a project, you must seek the consent of your husband. If your husband so desires that you go ahead, whatever you are doing should be under his supervision and superintendent because you are supposed to be one. So where your husband clearly gives instruction that you stop, woman, the scripture says stop. Because you cannot build a house and pack to go and stay there alone. There should be cooperation. There should be harmony. So bring that money to the table, not for the husband to grab and squander, but for it to be spent jointly in the center of God's will. If your husband felt, yes, building is good, but at this time it is not a priority. Woman, our counsel is that you will wait patiently and plan together. Don't allow building, physical structure, bricks and mortar to bring separation to the institution that God Almighty himself has created. Now, why will the husband stop the wife from going ahead to purchase a real estate or to build a house? One, if the basis for that project is to usurp the authority of the husband in the home, the husband will stop it. Two, if it is done in secrecy, some will say, I want to surprise my husband. You are surprising your husband. You took loan or cooperative. You bought land. You are surprising your husband. He didn't know. On your own woman, you got some missiles and workers. You lay foundation. You draw a plan of a building. Your husband did not know. Then you finish that project. You now say, my husband, I want to take you somewhere for a surprise. That is not a surprise. It's pure insubordination. An husband may not appreciate that. But as God is blessing you, darling, husband, we are thinking that where we are now, we can expand, we can increase. There is an opportunity that is coming my way and that will be coming my way in my business and my career. Or in our office where we work, there is staff cooperative. Our office have purchased a large parcel of land and they want staffs to buy them and they will be making gradual deduction from our salary. That is a good initiative. You discuss with your, your husband, take him to that side, agree together. And when you agree, such a project can go on. In fact, as God bless your husband, he will even put more resources there to bring it up. And in that way, it is a family project, not an isolated project. This is how we are to handle issues like this. Where you need more clarification, consult us and you will be counseled properly as to how to manage such situation. But where it gets to a point where the husband is saying, if you go ahead, you will pack out of the house. It means that we are already crossing the red line. There is a flag there, a red flag. And we are to stop at that point and submit to the will of God. Thank you very much. I hope that answered that question. For further clarity, you can contact us and we will help you with more explanation. Thank you very much. God bless you. We strongly believe that God has spoken to you through the ministration of the word with our Father in the Lord, Pastor Jacob Elegon. For inquiries, counseling, and prayer requests, please contact 0803-377-2529 or 810-360-7003.
This program is brought to you by Faith Contenders Revival Ministry. Be blessed. We make it.